Number three, Ludmilla Pavlyshenko, 309 Damn. kills. All right, boys, let's get into it. Top 10 deadliest snipers Number 10, of all time. Carlos Norman Hathcock, 93 kills. Damn, Carlos Hathcock 93? was a United States Marine Corps sniper with a service record of 93 confirmed kills. Hathcock's record and the extraordinary details of the missions he undertook made him a legend in the Marine Corps. His fame as a sniper and his dedication to long distance shooting led him to become a major developer of the United States Marine Corps sniper training program. The M25 sniper rifle has been named White Feather in honor of Hathcock. The enemy called him White Feather because he wore a white feather on his hat to taunt enemy troops hoping to collect a large bounty for his death or capture offered by the enemy. Bro, that's hard. What Number the nine, hell? Chuck Mulwiney, 103 kills. Chuck Mulwiney is an Oregon-born American who served in the United States Marine Corps as a sniper during the Vietnam War. In just 16 months, he killed 103 enemies and another 216 months? kills were listed as probables by the military only because it was too risky at the time to search the bodies for documents. Malwini told no one about his service as a sniper, not even his wife. After the revelation of his extraordinary wow. record as a sniper, Malwini slowly increased his public profile. He began speaking at conventions and public events and attending national sniper shooting competitions. Malwini is a spokesman for Strider Knives, which produces a knife bearing his signature on the blade. That's pretty cool. Number eight, Adelbert Waldron, 109 kills. Adelbert Waldron was a oh, United States Army sniper have? who served during the Vietnam War with the 9th Infantry Division. Although little known until 2011, Waldron held the record for confirmed kills by any American sniper in history at 109. Waldron was a two-time recipient of the Distinguished Service Cross, both awarded for separate actions in 1969. Bro, that crazy. Although U.S. Navy SEAL Chris Kyle later acquired more confirmed kills, Waldron worked in a jungle environment where target opportunities were less commonplace, whereas Kyle worked in a target-rich urban environment where the rules of engagement were more lax. At one time, any adult male in the city is a target. Number 7, Henry Norwest, 115 kills. Henry Norwest was a distinguished Canadian sniper in World War Ooh, I. Canadian! Ooh. A former ranch hand and rodeo performer. He served for a short time with the Royal Northwest Mounted Police until January 1915 when he joined the Canadian Army. In his nearly three years of service with the 50th Canadian Infantry Battalion, the Lance Corporal achieved a documented sniping record of Bro, 115 a fatal scope. shots. Scope. While Northwest was an outstanding marksman, the thing that set him apart from others was his superb stealth tactics and his expertise in the use of camouflage. His superiors frequently set him on reconnaissance missions into no man's land or behind enemy lines. Number six, Chris Kyle, 160 knows this guy. kills. Chris Kyle was a United States Navy SEAL and the most lethal sniper in US military history with 160 confirmed kills. Kyle served four tours in the Iraq War and was awarded several commendations for acts of heroism and meritorious service in combat. During four tours of duty in the Iraq War, he was shot twice and survived six separate IED explosions. Kyle was Leave. honorably discharged from the U.S. Navy That's in 2009. That's a sad movie if you guys ever watch it. a best-selling autobiography, American Sniper, which was published in January 2012. On February 2nd, 2013, Kyle was shot and killed at a shooting range near Chalk Mountain, Texas, along with friend Chad Littlefield. The man accused of killing them, Eddie Ray Ralph, a 25-year-old U.S. Marine Corps veteran, was found guilty of both murders and later sentenced to life in prison without parole. A film adaptation of Kyle's autobiography, directed by Clint Eastwood, was released in December 2014. Wow, that came out in Number 2014? five, unnamed British Royal Marine Sniper. 173 kills. Good. The unnamed Royal Marine God. is the world's deadliest alive sniper with 173 confirmed kills. The Briton had served in the Royal Navy's elite unit for more than a decade. He has completed more than five tours from Northern Ireland to Afghanistan and Iraq. Most of the hits took place during one... Brother, imagine that. Imagine just walking the streets knowing you have a body count of 100... 
and 73 people and nobody knows. That's wild. Six month tour in Afghanistan God, with damn. 90 militants. How do you carry that burden? Day. It is believed he was using a British built L115A3 long range rifle, one of the Army's most powerful sniper weapons. The identity of the sniper, who is a married father Bro, look at who grew this up in the south right of England, here. is a closely guarded secret for fear he would become a target for Islamic terrorists. Number four, Vasily Zaitsev, 242 kills. Vasily Zaitsev was a Soviet sniper and a hero of the Soviet Union during World War II. Eesh. During the Battle of Stalingrad, he killed 225 soldiers, including 11 enemy snipers. Zaitsev took part in the Battle of Stalingrad until January 1943, when he suffered an injury to his eyes from a mortar attack. On February 22, 1943, Ooh, Zaitsev was awarded the title Hero of the Soviet Union. He then returned to the front and finished the war at the Silo Heights in Germany with the military rank of captain. He became a member of the Communist Party in 1943. Number 3. Damn. Ludmila Pavlyshenko, 309 kills. Ludmila Pavlyshenko was a Soviet sniper during World War II. She made her first two she, kills oh, she using a Tokarev SBT-40 semi-automatic rifle with a 3.5 power telescopic sight. The first action she saw was during the conflict in Odessa. She was there for two and a half months and notched 187 kills. When they were forced to relocate, oh she spent the next eight months fighting in Sevastopol in the Crimean Peninsula. There she recorded 257 kills and for this feat, she was cited by the Southern Army Council. Pavlyshenko was also wounded by mortar fire. Because of her growing status, she was withdrawn Bruh, she from don't combat miss. less than a month after recovering from her wound. Pavlyshenko's total confirmed kills during World War II was 309, including 36 enemy snipers. She is regarded as the most successful female sniper in history. Holy crap. Number two. You killed Francis a lot of Americans on that too. 378 kills. Francis Pegamagabo was the first nation soldier most highly decorated for bravery in Canadian military history and He's the most Canadian? effective wow. sniper of World War I. Three times awarded the military medal and seriously wounded, he was an expert marksman and scout. Let me pause it right here. Who do we think is going to be number one? I'm going to say... It's going to be the White Death from Finland. I'm just, uh, that's my guess. Credited with killing 378 Germans and capturing 300 more. He was using the much maligned Ross rifle. Though a hero among his fellow soldiers, he was virtually forgotten once he returned home to Canada. Later in life, he served as chief and a counselor for the Wasking First Nation and as an activist and leader in several First Nations organizations. That's sad, Number man. one, Sibo Heha, hey, 505 kills. Sibo Heha, nicknamed White Death by the Red Army, was a Finnish marksman. Oh my. His duties as a sniper began during the Winter War, 1939 to 1940. Bruh, his outfit is savage as hell, man. All white, white mask, no scope. The little dagger on the end, uh, what is that, a bayonet? 505? Could you imagine killing Russia that many people? In Finland. During Holy. the conflict, Heha endured freezing temperatures up to minus 40 degrees Celsius. In less than 100 days, he was credited with 505 confirmed kills. He preferred iron sights over telescopic sights as to present a smaller target for the enemy. A sniper must raise his head higher when using a telescopic sight. To increase accuracy, a telescopic sight's glass can fog up easily in cold I know, weather, so that girl doesn't and miss? concealment, sunlight glare, and telescopic sight lenses Simo does not can reveal miss. a sniper's position. As well as these tactics, he frequently packed dense mounds of snow in front of his position to conceal himself, provide padding for his rifle, and reduce the characteristic puff of snow stirred up by the muzzle blast. He was also known to keep snow in his mouth while sniping to prevent steamy breaths giving away his position in the cold air. Holy. The Soviets' efforts to kill Heha included counter snipers and artillery strikes. And on March 6, 1940, he was shot in the lower left jaw by a Russian soldier. 
he was picked up by fellow soldiers who said half his face was missing, but hmm. he did not die, regaining consciousness on March wow. 13th, the day peace was declared. Simo Heha died in a war veterans nursing home in 2002 at wow, the age of 96. All right, boys, that wraps up this video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you like and subscribe. If you want to recommend a video, hit me up over on Instagram. It's at Kindy Reacts. And then don't forget, take it easy.